All right. I'm hoping that our whole meeting today will be less than half an hour, but <laughs> they rarely are. Uh, but I think that an important thing to state for those that are listening or watching this video are, are that uh, this is our third meeting about this, right? And, and when we did the first meeting, Allerton Abbey was 99.5% complete. I mean, you guys have been living in it, but there's still a little bit of work to be done with the floors. There's some fine tuning work to be done here and there, like a handle on one of the doors would be nice. Right, yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> the idea is gertitude. We wanna, we wanna take a one acre plot and uh, make it a permaculture paradise for a person, for Gert, for this, our fictitious Gert. And um, today, uh, Gert will be played by Jen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the the key is is like okay, we've got a one acre. We've got a we've got plans for a pond. We've got uh, 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 the Chateau de Pou, um, and we're gonna move it. Uh, there's also the idea of uh, adding in a gray water system, uh, and but we want it to be a year round gray water system in Montana. This is one of the things that was going to be done during the permaculture jamboree this year, but it got canceled. Uh, by the way, the boogie loo virus is something that apparently if you say it, then YouTube will spank you. So we got to not say the word, but we've been, we've, we've been through the boogie loo virus. We're done with it. It's behind us. Uh, how are you feeling, Fred? <laughs> Did you work all day yesterday? Mm, almost. Almost. Okay. Um, but uh, so we did two design sessions where we kind of tried to figure out where do we want to put this this greenhouse. Oh, and the greenhouse is strictly for the gray water system, so we could do it all year round. So it's not like you're putting gray water just out onto the ground and it's like you're funkifying everything. We want to be able to have a full biological thing happen to to clean that water all year long. And um, as we designed the greenhouse to handle the, the gray, gray water stuff earlier this year, we decided to make a Wafati greenhouse. So a lot of innovations all happening at once with that. But where, where exactly do we put it? And that's what part of what the, today's design stuff is. So we're, where do we move the Chateau de Pou? Uh, where do we put the greenhouse? Uh, plus access road. Uh, we needed to have a bit of an access road to get to the back end of the property. Although we, we like the idea that when things get a little bit more established, that that road, that access road for this one acre is going to be used maybe once every three to five years. Uh, also, we needed a berm shed to put bicycles and some tools and things like that. So where does that go? Um, so those were our previous conversations. We also had a lot of design ideas about um, hogo culture and things of that nature. Um, and and so this is this is our third meeting. We've we've gone through some of the rougher steps. I think we've made some amazing progress. Real quick note: Why do we limit this to one acre? Okay, am I the only? Sure. Okay, imagine like right now, you guys yesterday spent time working on the junk pole fence, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how would that be if it was a three acre plot instead of a one acre plot? Annoying? <laughs> Definitely more daunting. Yeah. I think a big thing is is that when you go out and you buy property and you have 20 acres, the choices that you generally make are very different than if you have a half an acre. And at a half an acre, you're gardening. At 20 acres, um, it turns out for most people, they get so caught up in doing 20 acres, they end up not having a garden. And so I kind of feel like start with one acre. Now, Allerton Abbey is currently surrounded by several open plots. And so if, for example, we had a girt there and then that girt married and had kids or whatever, needed more acres to feed more people. Well, there are surrounding bits of acres and you can expand after the first acre is your permaculture paradise. And so I kind of feel like most girts are going to end up with two to three acres. Um, <clears throat> so limit the scope limit it to one acre so you can make a permaculture paradise um if you go if you go much bigger than that it becomes challenging i mean plus the other thing is is that can you imagine gardening that full acre i mean it would take 10 years to make it a magnificent garden it's just like it's just you think an acre sounds like it's small but when you're when you're there and you're gardening it's massive. Now, granted, if you're thinking like, I'm going to raise cattle, okay, now the minimum is 80 acres, and we've got 200. 
And so um, we're, we're all set. So if a person has their one acre and they're going to come and do cattle also, we've also got 200 acres that they can run their cattle on. No problem. All right. Back to this design. Um, I, I, I like what you've done with the, the, the road, where you've defined the road. And, and hopefully um, all of that road will go unused. And um, uh, we, we like the idea of eventually ending up in a bike ped community where there's just no vehicles, really. Um, there's just footpaths. Um, but, you know, there are times when a, a road is, is, a, is a positive thing and you need to, to bring uh, something significant in or take something significant out. And so it's good to have road access. I mean, I believe we have eight people here now, yeah. right? And and uh, how many how many people are uh, permaculture design certified? P how many people have taken a PDC and gotten certified? One, two, three, four. Not you. Not you. Not you. Not you. Okay, so half of us are certified designers, and so we know all the stories. I mean, there was a bit of an argument about that fucking sun. <laughs> <laughs> But apparently that's the way Bill Mollison wants it. And you know what? I'm going to say I don't agree with Bill. Um, but that's another story for another day. I thought it was an explosion until Josiah drew a face on it. <laughs> <laughs> we kept putting in designs for Hugo culture, and then it kept getting screwed up by how we wanted to move structures around and stuff. Yeah. And like, no, but we want to do this over here. And so then it kind of got to like, we got to, we got to, nail down these structures first. We've got to nail down the road, we've got to nail down the greenhouse, nail down where we're going to move the Chateau de Pou, and we've got to nail down where we're going to put the berm shed. Mm -hmm. So we've got those structures on oh. the map. We also already have a pretty good idea of what's going to be in this area. Um, it's, it's going to be, the slope is going to be regraded um, so that it's wheelbarrow, uh, wheelbarrowable. Okay. And um, there's going to be a bunch of hugels that are kind of in this direction, um, something like that. Yeah. That's not what it's actually going to look like, but that's we already know that that's pretty much what we're going to do. Um, we also why why that direction? <clears throat> Can you share that? So that. Um, when you look out the the big bay windows, <laughs> you can see down your jungle. Um, I think I think it's going to make your jungle probably five times more lush. Your view, five times more garden than if they went the other way. Also, with that orientation, you get a diversity. Um, on each hugel, you get a diversity of aspects um, in relation to the sun, um, which makes a lot of sense to me, having you know living there and, and watching that, that space. Um, we also know that our design for the hugels on the mass themselves are going to be kind of like something like this, something like that. Um, and in the last week, as we've been moving a bunch of stuff around, um, this makes a whole lot of sense to me. Um, I think an important up and down that a bunch of times. I think an important thing is, is that there will be no hulu <laughs> cultures that are on top of open building. Mm -hmm. So the Wafati's under there, and there's a mass on the sides of the Wafati. So putting Hugo culture on top of that mass is cool, but we don't want to be putting Hugo culture on top of the structure because then we're load bearing over open air. And so um, that's, I, I think, okay, everybody's, that's cool. No, that's well, not a problem. All right. Right. So the things that, um, <clears throat> that stand out to me as the next, the next most, uh, the next biggest design problems. Um, uh, as we are sort of defining this area as a, um, you know, a high value gardening space right out the door of the Abbey. And it's also gonna have the Greywater greenhouse, the Chateau, it makes it zo zone one for sure, because you're gonna be coming out here very regularly. Um, so this, this area is of, of high importance to figure out. Um, it's going to take some regrading to redirect the road. Uh, through here, there's a bunch of piles of dirt. There's some trees. Um, and then 
figuring out what the grade for the drainage ditch uh, road exchange is going to be. Um, there's a big pile of dirt here. Um, and then this area, which is, you know, currently a road, um, what does it look like if we move the road over here? Then that opens up this space, which previously in our designs was an access road. Um, this space now becomes open game for gardening, and it's really, you know, it's really easily accessible from the back door. Um, it's going to be easily accessible from the road. Um, so coming up with garden designs, Hubel designs for this area, which will be, you know, the farthest back um, access from the excavator. So if we bring the excavator in um, and start working here and then sort of paint ourselves out of the abbey by working back along the road, um, this area needs to be designed. Um, so those are, those are some ideas that I currently have and would like our conversation to focus on as far as uh, trying to get that excavator work going on. Um, anybody have any ideas? We well, one of the things that I kind of like is the idea <clears throat> of a more iterative design. So my philosophy when doing permaculture design work is that whatever drawing we have now is is not the drawing for the next five years, it's the drawing for today. Mm -hmm. So we first need to embrace that, you know, be, we need to fight our instinct to marry the document and um, instead be prepared to, you know, wad it up and throw it away at the end of the day. Sure. Like this is an idea for the moment. Um, so the next uh, state is, is that I prefer a more iterative or evolutionary design than like, here is the plan, and now let's make the plan happen. So I think that there's elements of the plan that we want to like make long term, but I kind of feel like some of this is like, how about if we make that part first, and then after it's made, then we will get ideas for new designs. Sure. Whereas by sitting here and looking at this document, it could be misleading in a lot of different ways. And um, uh, I think a better approach would be, how about if, if we build a bunch of this stuff, then we take a new picture and we've got more on the ground design ideas. Yeah. So um, I think uh, too many PDCs are like, Make your one-year plan, your five-year plan, and your 20-year plan, and then marry it. You're going to just lock it down. It's etched in stone. And I kind of feel like even with your original plan, and I think in the World Domination Gardening video, that's part of what we did, is we said, let's go up and do a bit of a design, and then we do some work, and then while we're in the middle of the work, it's like now we're going to change the whole design. Let's, let's, instead, we were going to do this and this and this. Instead, we're going to do the opposite of that. And here's why. And it's because when we were digging, we found rock here and clay there. And so let's change everything. And I think that that's an important, an important thing to embrace as we're about to move forward. Question. Yes. The, where the end ground, or I guess, what, what did you call it earlier, the Wasadi greenhouse, is that going to be open or covered? So see where he's got those kind of curvy lines on the back? Mm -hmm. That's where there's going to be um, a mass with a membrane over it. So the idea is, is that we want to make it so that we're going to do, we're going to work with annualized thermal inertia. So one of the things we noticed with Allerton Abbey so far is that um, uh, you can go in there and you can build a fire and cook for hours and the temperature inside barely changes. Mm -hmm. But now, for the next five days, the temperature, the average temperature inside will kind of be a little warmer. And so um, what we want to do is to be able to, because the other thing with a greenhouse is, is a lot of times you're going to get like all this solar gain, and then uh, suddenly it becomes 140 degrees inside and everything dies. But if you've got a, a thermal mass in there, then it's kind of like you'll get all this solar gain and it won't get over 85 inside. And so at the same time, um, suddenly it's 20 below outside, but it's still 70 inside. It's like it's, it's going to drain your, your 
uh, solar mass slightly. So we've got, we've got so much to talk about about that, but those lines are attempting to show where the mass is going to be. Does that help? Does that answer your question? And there will also be a roof yeah. Yeah. over the structure. Yeah. Right, so the orange rectangle is essentially equivalent to the, the sort of polygon on top that we're not of the Wofati that we're not covering with Hugel. And then the curvy lines are equivalent to the earthen mass that we are covering with Hugel. While I'm thinking about it, we're recording this, and so I want to do a, a thing to basically say um, we have spots available in the boot camp. <laughs> Fair? You too I could mean, be around this table. Yeah, you could be at this table. <laughs> Uh, you know, the, 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 the total cost for being here for a week or a year or many years is a hundred bucks. Um, and, uh, I don't know, I, I kind of like to describe it as it's like a, a one week workshop each week, week after week. I mean, I think we do a pretty good job of keeping it so that it's interesting. It's not like, okay, now, you know, <laughs> you're talking to the people who have been harvesting junk pool. Every morning. Every <laughs> <day>. <laughs> On average, it's pretty interesting. This the, week, I, I, I learned something every day. Well, the oh, days are mixed up. Yeah. You don't, Sawyer. You're not doing junk pole all day every day. <laughs> Only half a day every day. And then we're planting seeds <laughs> for the other half. Yeah. Which is cool. But I, I think that people can come for just a week if they want. And during that week, whichever week they pick, there'll probably be a lot of excellent projects, including building this um, greenhouse project. Time on the excavator. I don't think I don't think the excavator's really been fired up yet this year, has it? Uh, not this calendar year. Well, I know. I know the jump to get the bucket back on. Okay. All right. <laughs> I I know that some people have expressed that that they would like to get uh, um, excavator experience right away, and I think that's probably going to happen soon. I wanted to ask something about the things that jump pull because we're laughing and joking around about it. But the thing is, is it's really invaluable because in this area you have to have a jump pole fence, right? Right to garden. It's all in service of the gardening. Right? Well, you have to have some kind of fence. It doesn't yeah. have to be a jump pole fence, but right. we're choosing to do jump pole for a variety of reasons. I'm just saying it's an important thing to learn. That's all. We're using yeah. material Real that otherwise life. would be burned. What? Yeah. Real life. Yeah. I mean, fencing and seeding. Yes. You know, it's yeah. country living. It's I, not always fun, but. So I mean, if the jump pole scares you away, then... Well, I mean, it's like, I, I think that if we were in China, they'd be building fence out of bamboo. Yeah. This is effectively our bamboo, isn't yes. it? All right. Josiah. We got six minutes. Um, I'm willing to go a little <laughs> over, okay. although my throat's so starting to hurt. Are you, you're proposing that, you know, to, to, to play with the iterative design idea, um, we can build all of these... Uh, all of these hugels um, in the next week or two um, without without doing anything that would make it difficult for us to access any of the other as uh, parts of the abbey plot with the excavator mm -hmm. because they're all on the interior um, you're not we're not you know this isn't even we don't even want to bring the excavator over here so it's not an access road um, but that's that's sort of your your idea is maybe we'll we'll do this stuff first, and then we'll have a better idea about what's going on over here. I I think that right now the thing to do is to design everything that's within your road mm -hmm. because like especially right in here because mm -hmm. this is your zone one, right. and while this is currently feels like zone a, one, you point with a mount. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This current this over here currently mm -hmm. feels like our zone one. Mm -hmm. And that's because um, we're coming in and out of here to uh, do projects. And um, also, I think when you're going to use the chateau where it is now, when, when you use the chateau, chateau where it is now, are you coming out the, this door? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so in which case, all of this becomes your zone one. But I think um, uh, We've got a pond that we're building here, and it's a little too close to the chateau, so we're moving it over here, which will also make the chateau a little closer, but that's going to make this area become the zone one. Mm -hmm. I think if there were a handle on the back door, it would move to zone <laughs> one much quicker. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, let's get that handle. <laughs> um, uh, 
so I, I does, does the idea of iterative design make sense to everybody? Yes, and I think we are all on board with that. Okay, all right. Um, so uh, uh, I do think that, that this needs to be especially well designed at this point, and I think that it would be good to get, like, because we were talking about some ideas about right in here. Right, but that's your parking spot that I'd like to, to possibly, right, correct, yeah, <laughs> but, but it's like we had some challenges about some different ideas and getting all, can we get all the ideas or to sacrifice some or what, but um, to, to figure out what we want to do right here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, yeah, this is going to be a lot of uphill, downhill stuff. You said something about let's not move the excavator in there, and I'm thinking like, oh no, I why mean, not? I mean, we don't want to, like, we're not going to drive the excavator over here to access this spot. If we were going to oh. access this spot, we would drive it around. Right, yeah. right, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, I'm thinking, like, as far as where to build Hugo culture right now, let's limit it to within this space. Right. And then um, uh, we'll start doing these gardens and making this a magnificent growing space now. And after that's done, and after this road is in, um, then let's revisit design. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I like, I like this where we where you guys selected for this. I like where you selected for this and this, and I kind of feel like uh, the the pond is going to need um, some reshaping and stuff. And because we're not exactly nailing down the design, we can do a little bit of that uh, live while we're there and decide how we want to do it while we're there. So one thing we've talked about, Paul, is potentially connecting up the the uphill drainage ditch and the... Are you talking about this? Uh, the, the front of the abbey? The oh, front, here. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the the road, essentially. Like this what thing What is now here, the this, road. This yeah. blue, 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 blue. Well, because we've talked about extending the drainage either out into the woods or to join what okay. is now the road. So <clears throat> would that be something... So Fred and I talked last fall about having the drainage go this way. Right. But the more we talked about it, the more sense it made to do what you have effectively drawn right here. Yeah. I think I was thinking more like over here, but what you have here is is great. Um, I, I, it's wonderful. Um, so uh, I I think that the key is is that it does seem like from just you know walking around that it, there would be a gentle little slope down this way, and this would work. And it would. And your thoughts that you've expressed in the past is, if any if a raindrop lands over here, could we please have it fill this pond? Yes. Yeah. And so um, I'm thinking wise, sharp. Let's let's uh, let's do that. The other thing is is that as we drive on this road with the excavator and other equipment, it's going to help pack it so that water can be carried better over to here. Yeah. And maybe we want to do an inverted crown since this road will be used so very rarely. Mm. It's a thought. So all right, did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, what's next? Um, do we want to talk about what the Hugel's design could be on this, this area inside the road here? Point with the mouse. <clears throat> well, maybe we need to do... So, what do the Hugels look like in here? I think that part of it is going to be that we're going to want Hugels to kind of run this way. Now, one of the things that we're doing here with, with the, the general design of these hoogles is we want the hoogle culture to, um, in general, um, to, be, to be perpendicular to contour. We want to avoid the creation of frost pockets in general in a northern climate. So if you were in a southern climate, you would favor swales. Mm -hmm. Or you might, if you're going to do hugel culture, you might do them on contour. That helps to make frost pockets, which you want in a tropical or subtropical climate. And granted, here we might have the occasional rare uh, frost pocket that we intentionally created. But for the most part, we want to extend our growing season. We are in Montana. Um, and so we want to make our hugel cultures run contrary to uh, contour. I, I think... 
in this particular case, we want to temper that desire with, we want to walk from the bottom to the top of the Abbey at some point. Yes. And so we need paths that are not contrary not, to contour. Not fully perpendicular to contour. That's maybe. true. Yeah. That's true. Um, so I think we need to... A lovely, gentle path that comes over like this um, is can, can be a nice thing. Because these, these over here, this is a gentler slope over here and here. <coughs> Whereas this is a steeper slope here and here and here and here. So, um, yeah. what's that? I said very steep. Yeah. Yeah. So you, it's not a place. If I mean, we could add in steps. Right. There, um, which would work, which would be effective. I, uh, I had the luxury of carrying um, a lot of brush up to the top of the abbey earlier this week, because we staged. We've been staging um, slash here, uh, which is where. You know, we're not going to be building any Hugo culture and we're not going to drive the excavator up there. So it's an easy staging spot for Slash for building these uh, Hugo beds. Um, and so I was carrying Slash from here to here for a good hour or two, um, hundreds of trips. And I studied this walkway and I think, I think this would be totally gentle enough uh, to come up this, this path. Um, I think this path would be easy, equally as gentle. Um, I think today would be a great day to figure out exactly where we want to put these hookah cultures. And by the way, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm hoping we're all agreed that these hookah culture beds are going to be at least seven feet tall. Does anybody have an objection to that anywhere? We're on board with <clears throat> trying out your designs okay. whole hog on this project. And there I needs to be probably at least so each hookah culture is going to end up being about seven feet wide. And um, unless you can make them super duper steep, then you can go a little narrower. Um, and then you probably need six to seven feet in between hookah cultures. Fred? Um, well, I, I just I thought you had said something like the top edge, like the uphill edge where it's going up the abbey would be shorter. Oh, to compensate for the right. slope itself. So, so. that so that the top ed, the top ridge of the hugel itself will be closer to level. Right. So like the right so then as two feet tall. Yes. 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 Yeah. Good point, Fred. Excellent. Excellent. <clears throat> um, I also think that uh, it's possible that we might make some planting areas that are above the living structure of the of the wafati. Um, but they might only be a foot tall or something like that. Um, but I think that there's going to be a, a strong advantage for a season extender on top of the Wafadi in time as the, um, uh, I think that, uh, that the things growing on top of the Wafadi are going to be warmed a little bit by basically being over the warm space of the Wafadi. We did notice somewhat faster melting along the the gable line essentially of the wafati if someone could kind of point to that area with the mouth that would be <clears> awesome but um so the gable line here yes exactly so um, the snow, snow is melting off of there faster than most over here. places yeah well kind of than anywhere around at that point mm -hmm. well i kind of think that you know, as we make some, some small beds in here and we do some planting and there's paths and things like that, <clears throat> and then we add a lot of mulches, of a variety of different mulches, then I, it seems to me like the layers of mulches up here are going to effectively act as a type of insulation for the structure, mm -hmm. which means that um, the soil beneath it is going to be like maybe 10 or 15 degrees warmer than if the mulches weren't there. So... <clears throat> What about the moisture content of that mulch? Would that not help transfer heat more quickly? Yeah, it would. So um, it, it, it would transfer cold more quickly as well. Um, and so uh, it's like, yeah, exactly. Yep. Which is a problem um, in, I, in I ways. Would, I would be hesitant then to be putting a lot of beds on top of it. I think that any, any um, increase in heat transfer that you get from the mulch is 
still you're still going to receive an insulative benefit than if it was just bare soil. Yeah. Mm. Also, the bare soil erodes and is super ugly, so I we're not. I'm not do voting it. for bare soil. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. All right. What do we? Is there anything else we want to talk about this time? I mean, I think that the next thing is is like let's let's design the hugo cultures that are going to be all up in here here especially here and then around in here all the way over to here so um you you said you're you had a question a little while ago about like what do i think we ought to do for hugo cultures right in here mm -hmm. um this is going to be the low point is this uh is this a higher point here i mean we need drainage from there over to here that right, right where the um, where the greenhouse is is currently a low point, and we wanted that for um, the gray water. But as you said before, <clears throat> the topography in that entire space can be changed very easily. So it seems like we want a fairly direct line here. Yes. Um, and so then it, I kind of feel like uh, you can draw with. Uh, if I, I think if I do drawing with purple. Okay. Um, so this has got some uh, slope to it, and I want to I want to come down here, and I want to come down here. I kind of feel like there's probably going to be something of a path right here. Right, we have got that gate going. So it seems like there's this, and then of course we're going to end up with stuff like this. And then I think that much like the the reason why we want to be able to see more of a jungle here, it's similar for looking at this window, right? So I wonder if we might do something like this. And then over here, we're going to have the opening um, to get the sun. So we don't probably want to keep this we probably want to keep this area fairly open so we can get a fair amount of sun to be hitting our southern exposure on this. Right. So maybe not get too much closer right there. Just maybe. for people who might be watching who are confused right now, the, the greenhouse is facing south. The Wofati is deliberately not oriented to the south for solar gain, which a lot of people assume that it is. Oh, right. And yeah. I do think that if we were to start construction on a brand new Wafati uh, this year, which we're not going to, right. we're going to finish Cooper Cabin, uh, the, uh, the, our bigger Wafati, uh, assuming we have enough people in the boot camp. I mean, so much of this, <laughs> we keep talking about all the projects we want to do this year, and it's like it depends on how many boots we get. <laughs> Um, and uh, so, which is a great reason that if you're not going to be here for the boot camp, please put coin into the BRK. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, enticing more more boots to come out and do the BRK. That way, you get more pictures and stuff. Um, I think that if we were to build a brand new Wafati this year, there's two elements that I would want definitely want to add. Um, more slope. This is the slope here is too gentle. Mm -hmm. And we've we've discovered, which is you know this is an experimental structure. We've discovered why you don't want to use this much slope. I mean, it's like we had to, in order to get enough dirt to put on the top while keeping this an above ground structure, rather than like if it was on a slope, like if this was sloped ground, we would just and this is the uphill over here. We would just dig this and plop it on the roof, and it would make a bigger uphill uh, patio. But we didn't. It's it's almost level. It's just a very gentle slope, and so we. This is why there's a pond here. <laughs> we we dug this up and dumped it on the roof. Right. And so, um, <laughs> and it's like that was a lot of work. And it was like, okay, that that sucked big. So if we were to do this over again, I would have a little bit more slope, and I would try to orient. Maybe not entirely, but a little bit more. And it's like, you know, hillsides vary. And so you can make something that's got a little bit more where <coughs> you're, you're, you've got a little more southern exposure. Because I kind of feel like passive solar has problems. And I kind of feel like a Wafati solves all of those problems. And so you're going to have a much better passive solar home when you combine it with a Wafati. On that subject, uh, how much slope? 
like how much smoke is there right now and how much pitch do you prefer? I would say, you know, not a 45 degree slope. I mean, that is steep shit. Um, but maybe something that's closer to 15 degrees, maybe even 20. That'd be fine. That'd be good. So have you, how many of you have seen the 10 by 10 site? That was a nice slope. That's, a, that's you know, yeah. it, it can be pointed out to you. It's near the lemon tree site. Um, it could be, so you can see it's, that's got a, it's got some gentle slope there, but it's, you know, and it's like, that's where we, we were, we were beginning to build the 10 by 10 with that in mind. Like we need more slope in order to be able to do this effectively. Right. Um, so along those lines with the lack of slope and then two more earth sheltered buildings to be built, where is that? Um, going to come from when we oh, bury those two buildings. That's a good point. Bigger because the pond? Po because the pond already is too deep yeah. by your estimation. We can yeah. take it from the 45 that he wants to do on the sides of the pond. He wants to cut the sides of the pond. But he wants 45. to ma make the pond shallower. shallower. So, maybe, yeah. maybe the thing to do is, is to say, Warren, get your ass out here. Like that. Because he listens to all the podcasts. <laughs> And, and it's like, so he's, he's a, a diesel mechanic, and he was going to come out here last fall to get the Millennium Falcon running. But it's like, that's why we have the Millennium Falcon, is we can go and dig a hole somewhere and move the innards to wherever we need it. And, um, and, and boy, that's going to be a big thing that we need to finish Cooper Cabin, because Cooper Cabin was built also in a space that's like not sloped enough. If we extend the pond toward the chateau a bit... Um, we might be able to get some of the dirt from there, but... Yeah. What about the idea of building, um, like, not extending the pond necessarily, but <clears throat> building some kinds of crater gardens on this side of the pond, the southern mm. southern side? Because you're going to have, the effectively, you're going to have the, the actual pond be a cold sink, and so then if, you know, if you excavate a little bit more in this area to make it be a more gentle slope, but that area is gonna have human cultures and be, uh, you know, have like Southern aspect um, and essentially be a crater garden uh, right above the pond. I wonder about the idea, maybe we can make another pond right here. That's totally possible, yeah. Yeah, I like more ponds. I don't think you're gonna get very Because then, the, then you can put the excavator here, you're gonna dig stuff up here and plop it over here. I mean, I'm not, confident even the pond we have is ever really going to have much water in it we can fix that okay <laughs> yeah i mean I, I, we've got i i think that we can record um seven or eight podcasts about how to fill it with water right and i mean some of the most magnificent permaculture projects i've seen yeah. or am aware of are on dry land, right. and then how did they add water to it? Right. I mean, um, this year we were going to do uh, the spring terrace and oh. or the humus well. Yes. And it's kind of like, that's not a particularly huge project. Um, maybe we should give it a stab this yeah. year if we had enough boots to get all I mean, the projects that's done. That's more my concern. <laughs> it's not that it's theoretically impossible, but that like if we're just digging holes and not attempting to fill them. <clears throat> Well, I think that yeah. where Josiah is going is that yeah. let's just imagine it being a crater garden. Don't try and turn it into a pond. pond. Yeah. yeah. All true. Okay, what have we left out? What have we got left? You had a question for a moment there. I was going to ask about something I realized it's not particularly related to this, it's like for the rest of the day. Oh, okay. All right. Hold on to that one for later. Anything else? I think maybe uh, we should all, this, this base map is available online, so we should all uh, draw out some hoogles, and, uh, and then we can have another short meeting in the future where we just go over those plans and talk about different hoogle layouts. Um, but, like I know nothing about it. Why would I be drawing one out? I have no you don't have to. You don't have to. Don't have to. More of the Let's just say that there's some people it. that are just aching to draw, all, oh. uh, design okay. stuff. I mean, like I think you get to a certain point where you crave a permaculture design course, and uh, then you want to design stuff over and over and over and over and over again. 
And so I think that there are certain people here that, that crave drawing those Google cultures. I, I want to learn about it. I want to be in on it. I just need to watch right now. Okay, understood. Understood. Anything else? If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about design, <laughs> homesteading, and permaculture all, all the, the time. time. Thank you.